me again. So my dog is doing zoomies in the background while I'm recording this. I cannot be responsible for the noise that you are probably going to hear while he races back and forth by me. But it's always me. Being a little crazy right now. So, uh, so uh, we've added the adjustment layers. Uh, we added uh, a separate layer to the sky uh, and then one above the background uh, that's being applied to all layers below that layer, uh, which will actually uh, be really important later on um, that that is being applied to all layers below it because um, as we make changes and adjustments and do some actual pixel editing to the background layer, uh, we're going to have multiple layers down there that we want adjusted all in the same way as the building, right? So, um, so that's going to come in handy later on. Before I show you some of these cool uh, editing techniques, uh, I am going to show you how to add text, uh, realistic looking text for the building sign for the Prototype Creativity Institute um, signage. So uh, we're going to make this their building. Um, and later on in Project 3, this is going to be the picture that you're going to use uh, for Prototype Creativity Institute in their newsletter to talk about their new location, to their, their new building. So, um, so I'm going to show you uh, how to add that sign first. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to be really careful, by the way, to make sure I have uh, the proper layer selected before I go um, adding this building sign, right? Um, so I'm actually going to uh, temporarily um, add this building sign uh, to just the background layer uh, because I don't want this levels adjustment layer to get stuck to the building sign. Uh, and it will kind of stick to it because I uh, clicked on that button. And uh, so I'm going to add it uh, now, keeping in mind if I want to at any point, I can drag and drop. Uh, and, and um, uh, move this sign to a different layer or to a different order in the layers. I might even want to move it all the way to the top so that it's not being adjusted at all. So, uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the type tool uh, and I'm going to make sure I'm creating horizontal type. Yes, that's going to allow me to type from left to right. And wherever I click on this building, it's going to give me a little blinking cursor where I click this I beam right now. And watch what happens as soon as I click to my layers panel. So I'm going to click and voila. It added a layer two, right? I can give it any name I want to, but it's actually gonna automatically uh, give me a name as soon as I start typing, which is pretty cool. Notice it put the type layer directly above, one step above the layer that I currently had selected. So I'm gonna uh, begin typing now. Um, and uh, I, I'm gonna uh, make sure that uh, I am spelling things correctly, T-Y-P-E. Uh, I think, right, uh, if you want it all caps, just leave your caps lock key on. If you want it upper lowercase, right, type it in upper lowercase. Um, so make sure the case is what you want it to be. Uh, I kind of like it to be all uppercase. I don't know. Uh, for me and my brain, it just is much more convincing as building signage. Um, and keep in mind, you're not going to be designing a logo for these guys right now. We don't do that in Photoshop, by the way, because Photoshop is pixels. Uh, we design logos in Illustrator, which is vector software, which is uh, free of pixels or resolution entirely, which is a beautiful thing, let me tell you. Um, but uh, but we, we never design logos um, from within Photoshop because it's raster or pixel-oriented software. Uh, I want to point out to you that it kind of looks weird, these letters. Um, if you've already figured out why, yes, bravo for you. The reason why is because my layer is below my sky layer that has the layer mask. So my type being below it is also being masked. If I want to, uh, I can grab this type layer right now and drag it. Oops, drag. It doesn't want me to do that with my type tool selected. So I'm going to use my move tool. Uh, it wants me right to, to drag. I'm going to drag it all the way to the top. Go all the way up, right? Uh, so my type layer is not below any of my adjustment layers. You see why I did that? I do not want my type layer to be adjusted by any of my levels adjustment layers, so I'm making sure it's on the top here of the picking order and doesn't have any levels above it being applied to it. So now notice my type is also in front of all layers, right? It's on top of the sky, it's on top of the building. Uh, it is the one thing that looks to our human eyes as though it's in front of everything, uh, which is good. So uh, by default, uh, I get a bounding box on my type. If I grab one of those corner handles, corner handles, I can scale this type down to a more appropriate size. This looks like a more appropriate size. Uh, I can also use um, other things within my uh, options panel to uh, make adjustments to this type, right? Uh, it is not convincing that this is flat, digital-looking type that is solid black uh, on top of this building on the sunny side. Uh, it's not ro right. I can rotate it right now if I want to by hovering near the corner of my bounding box to rotate it. But even now, it just looks like it's been, you know, digitized, rotated type there. So there's some things I'm going to want to do to this to make it look r more realistic. But first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit return. To, uh, to set the transformations to the scale and rotating that I just made to it. 
Now, in order to change the color of this type, I'm not going to use my foreground or background color in my tool panel. Instead, I'm going to grab my type tool, and I'm going to click and drag carefully, and I'm doing this carefully, because if I click anywhere else, or I don't click on the type that's already existing, it'll create a new type layer for me um, that I'd have to go delete, and, and you know, it's just extra time. So, uh, so I'm being careful while I'm using my type tool to highlight the type that's already there. Notice that the prototype type layer that I created is the one that's highlighted now, so I know I'm on the right layer. Check it out, up to the top, up here in my options panel, tells me the swatch for my type color. Yes, so I'm gonna click on that swatch up here, not one of these guys, but the swatch on the options panel, if I click that, it's gonna give me a color picker and allow me to pick a different color for my type. Now, I wanna point something out. I think this is a bug, by the way, that I have been begging Adobe to fix for years. Big complaint of mine. Uh, you should not be showing me a color picker with colors if I'm working in a grayscale document, right? Notice that I'm clicking on red, but it's changing it to just different values of gray, uh, my type right now. So, uh, so be mindful of that. Although you see colors in this color picker, you're working in a grayscale document, and it's really just changing the level of gray uh, for your type. I'm going to, I'm going to keep it on the light side. I am, I am on the sunny side of the building, you guys. Uh, so I'm going to want this probably to be pretty light, uh, and look like the sun is hitting it, right? So I'm going to keep it pretty light for now. If I change my mind later on, that's okay. Uh, I can still change my mind. Uh, and I'm going to click okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do to this type layer is I'm going to add layer styles because it does not look three-dimensional. It does not look realistic as a three-dimensional sign on this building. It's just flat, digital-looking type. So, um, by the way, uh, your options panel, when you have your type layer selected, does allow you to change your typeface as well. Um, some of you might call that a font. Others of us call it typeface. You'll find out why in typography class. <laughs> but a uh, big debate. Um, and when we're talking about the style of the letters, we're, we're we call it a typeface. Uh, if we're talking about a file we install on our computer, we call it a font. Um, so, uh, so I'm going to change the typeface or the style of these letters, uh, maybe. Uh, I think that the style by default, the last one I was using, is actually a pretty good one. Uh, but you're not going to want to change it to something that's scripty or handwritten or typewritery or, um, or looks overly decorative. And the reason being is because we want this to look like the type of letters somebody would use for building signage in this location um, and not something that's handwritten, right? People don't put handwritten type on buildings like this. Uh, and it's going to be three-dimensional, uh, very hard to do uh, with, uh, with, with scripty type. Uh, also, I think I'm going to keep it bold thicker letters because as I'm applying my layer styles, like my shadows and highlights and making it look 3D, uh, it's easier to do that when my letters are thicker. If my letters are really thin, uh, I could be making changes and not even see a difference in the change because those pixel widths for those letters is going to be so teeny tiny, you're going to be like, it doesn't even look like it's making a change. So uh, so I'm going to be making some changes. Uh, I am going to go ahead and keep this typeface the way it is, bold condensed the way it is. Condensed, by the way, means thinner, taller letters. They are designed to be thinner and taller um, as opposed to uh, wider or rounder. So, uh, so if it says condensed, then that means you're going to get taller, thinner letters. Um, so the, uh, the sizes here, yeah, um, you can uh, either change the size using your controls, or uh, if you want, you can use your move tool to get that bounding box and to scale it and rotate it um, based on what looks best uh, for the building and the location. So back to those layer styles. Uh, I have my type layer selected. Um, there's multiple ways to get to this. You can use your uh, layer pull down menu to go to layer style and to apply, say, bevel it in emboss, uh, which gives it a raised or 3D effect. Uh, you can add a drop shadow there. You can add uh, all sorts of effects there. I'm going to stick to the ones that are uh, going to help me keep this type realistic uh, in a full grandma, right? Uh, or you can get those same options on the bottom of your layers panel in the FX drop down menu. There's actually a bunch of really cool, helpful buttons down here. Uh, but that FX drop down menu gives you an opportunity to also select these same options. So I'm going to go ahead and start with bevel and boss. Uh, notice that it's going to bring up this layer style. And by default, right, whatever the last settings I was using, for Bevel and Boss in Photoshop, uh, it's important to note that that's exactly what it's still going to be set at. So I'm going to reset to default. Uh, and the reason why I'm resetting to default is because I don't remember what those uh, last settings were or for what it was for, but there's no way those exact same things are going to be able to be applied to um, the scenario I'm looking at right now. So uh, right now you'll notice this does not look realistic, right? Default doesn't look realistic, but neither did the last settings, but it gives me a starting point. First things first, the style should not be inner bevel. You should consider something like Emboss to make, oh, look at that already, to make those letters look three-dimensional, right? Uh, embossed means raised surface, right? Um, so I want these to be embossed. Now, notice that the depth, maybe the depth, maybe it's too deep. Maybe I don't want it to look that deep. Maybe I just want it to look this deep. Notice I'm making very small changes here, you guys. Size, maybe the size instead of eight is something like four or six or, right? If it's too big, look, you see that? This is me making too great a change for the very, very narrow pixel widths of these letters. So I'm going to keep the size small, realistic, right? Maybe six. If I want it to be a little softer, I can also soften that edge so it's not quite as crisp. But I don't think I want to soften this, to be honest with you, because it is 
made out of material that has probably got a harder edge. I can also use this here, this angle, the shading angle here, to change the direction of the light on the letters. I am going to want to make sure that the light, right, imagine this tiny little dot right there is the sun, that the light is coming from an angle that makes sense for where the sun is hitting other things in the image, right? So if I look at these shadows here, I'm feeling like the sun is in front of it somewhere over here, shining down onto the building and casting a shadow in that direction. So I'm going to want this angle to be similar to the angle that I'm seeing these other shadows in the pre-existing image. Uh, if I like that, I'm going to say, hey, great, but maybe this also needs a drop shadow because right now the letters have a shadow, but they're not casting a shadow themselves onto the building. Ooh, that's not looking good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and immediately bring the size of this drop shadow down. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and keep this drop shadow, maybe that crisp. We'll see, right? Maybe not as dark, but crisp. Um, uh, right now it's also too far away from the letters. So I'm going to bring the drop shadow closer to those letters. And then maybe I'm going to lighten that drop shadow. So it's not leaving like this black shadow, but, um, but a shadow that looks like it's matching how dark the other shadows are. Um, maybe even reduce the spread if I want to. Um, maybe that distance needs to be one more, seven, maybe it's six. Yeah, that looks a little good. And maybe the opacity even a little bit lighter. There we go. So uh, you should be feeling with these tiny, tiny little adjustments, just adding uh, an emboss, uh, adding a drop shadow, using some very subtle, small settings so you can see these changes, uh, already is making this sign look like it is on this building and that it's there and that it's convincing. Uh, actually kind of <coughs> impressed with how convincing it's kind of looking right now. One thing that might still be bothering you though is that this tight still looks rotated, right? It's kind of leaning a little bit to the right when really these letters should be standing upright based on the perspective of this. Now, normally I would go to edit, transform, and try and either distort, oops, sorry, distort or use perspective, but you'll notice those two options are grayed out. And the reason why they're grayed out is because my type layer is a type layer right now, right? In other words, I can still highlight these letters, I can fix the typo, I can change the typeface, and I can change the type size all together, right? Um, using my type tool. Um, but what that also means is that I can't distort it because I cannot distort the settings up here Yes, that are connected to the type as a type layer. So the only way I can make this modification is to select this layer, oh my gosh, and to rasterize it. Um, if you remember, the term raster means pixel oriented. Right now, this type is not pixel oriented. Uh, it's a type layer, a modifiable type layer. So um, I want to make this type layer into pixels so that I can then distort it and make it look more like it's matching the perspective of the building. So to rasterize it, I'm going to go to uh, the um, layer pull down menu to the layer called, where's my type layer? Where is it, guys? Um, no, 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 no. Rasterize, no, it's not rasterize. Uh, it's layer, rasterize, and then type. Uh, this goes to show you how often I don't do this in Photoshop. So uh, layer, rasterize, type. Uh, this is going to turn my type into pixels. Now, you might notice there's a slight change, right? It's showing me in this preview of the layers, this kind of uh, grid, right? That grid is telling me it's transparent. There's nothing there. There's no pixels, no white pixels, no black pixels. Really, all that's there is this tiny little, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and zoom in for you. See that little smudge right there? That little smudge, that's the word prototype in pixels. That's how tiny that thing is. Um, so uh, it's pixels now, it's not type. I can no longer grab my type tool and fix a typo. I cannot change the typeface. Uh, I, I can't do anything to that layer that I could do normally with a type layer because it's no longer type, it's just pixels. I'll prove it to you. I'll I'll do what you should never do. I'm going to grab this eraser right now and I'm going to make it a, a nice big brush so you can see here what I'm doing. Um, but I'm going to take this eraser brush and I'm going to erase, right? Oh my God, right? I'm going to undo, of course, undo, undo. Um, so uh, you'll see, right? It's pixels. You can't do that with type. <laughs> you can't do that with pixels. Don't use the eraser tool. It's just me demoing here, you guys. All right, check it out. Now that I have this rasterized layer, now I can go to edit, transform, and oh, do, do, what shows up? Distort in perspective. Oh my God. Uh, I'm actually just going to use distort. Um, and uh, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see what I'm doing as I'm doing it here up close. Uh, I'm going to grab one of these corners right here, and you'll notice, unlike when I scale something, it actually, these corners move independently of each other. So I'm going to make sure my type is upright, right? The E should be upright. This P should be upright compared to these upright angles of the building. And if I want to or if I need to, I can also make sure that this is getting slightly smaller. And this is slightly bigger because in perspective, things that are closer to us are bigger than those things that are further away. Do not panic if you see a bunch of these pixels. This is just Photoshop's really bad attempt to try and preview your scenario before you're done. But I'm going to go ahead and hit return so you can watch those pixels disappear. And you can see I have this more upright P, this more upright E. This prototype looks more like it is actually upright on the side of this building as opposed to, I'm going to hit undo, as opposed to just the crooked rotated version. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to hit redo because I liked my change and it looked pretty convincing. Uh, I'm going to zoom out here so you guys can see, yes, I have 
some signage on my building that looks realistic, I think grandma might actually be fooled. Um, keep in mind that this type has been rasterized, so I can no longer go in and edit it like a type layer, but it does mean that I can distort it. So save the distortion for the very last step of your type layer and after you have applied your styles to it um, so that you don't have to try and add styles uh, to flat pixels, uh, things that are not type later on. So um, so yeah, uh, kind of stick to that order I showed you and everything will be fine. Just start to do it out of that order uh, where things start to happen. It gets a little bit more complicated and confusing.